I want you to understand what this scripture is saying. Okay, let's start right now. We're going to go to Revelation 13. It's the second beast we're interested in today. Not the first, who's a political, economic, and military power, more than likely. We're going to look at the second beast here. The second beast has to do with the mark of the beast. It says, I beheld and I saw another beast. This is the second one coming up out of the earth. Had two horns like a lamb. Now that's your clue. That is your clue right here. Two horns like a lamb is for the wise to understand. This two horns like a lamb. What does that sound like to you? It's very clear to me that that's a reference to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And this is talking about the Christian religion. The Christian religion, believe it or not, is going to be the main proponent. I'm saying the main proponent of bringing in. Well, you might say, wait a minute. What about Dr. You Know Who and Bill, you know who the Gates man and all these other technologies and all the other companies like Moderna and whatnots and all these other things that are developing. They're not Christian, are they? They're not. They're not. How are? How can you say that more than like it's a Christian? Listen, you got the developers of such a mark, and then you have the promoters of such a mark. Do you understand the difference between a developer and a promoter? You getting me? Do you feel me? Do you feel me? Listen, this beast right here is promoting, promoting two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Listen, he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them to worship the first beast. These guys are going to be working together. This is going to be his false prophet, his supporter. His sidekick, very powerful, very, very influential, right? He's going to do wonders. We don't know what all that is yet. We don't know all what all that is yet. And it's going to deceive the whole world, deceive the earth by these miracles, right? Now, this second beast is going to say to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the first beast. So he, this second beast is not only about the mark, he's about the image of the beast. We're not here to talk about the image, but that's another, that's another whole weekend meditation right there. I want to keep moving past this part, but verse 15, meditate on what it's saying right there. It's amazing. Verse 16, he causes all them to receive a mark. We, we understand what this mark is, look what he causes all of them to receive. Now let's focus on that for a second. He causes, think about that, just that statement. He causes, he influences. It doesn't say he made a mark. He says to the people of the earth that they should make an image. He doesn't actually make the image apparently saying to them that dwell upon the earth that they should make that they should make, he's not making anything. He's not making anything. He says to them that they should make something and he's going to promote it. And then it says, and he causes all of them. Now I know this is about the mark and the top parts about the image, but think about it. He's influencing, he's influencing people to do something and he's causing them to receive a mark causing them to receive, okay? He causes them to receive. And we know what this word mark is. Anybody that doesn't understand this word mark is a, it's both, it's a spiritual mark and a physical manifestation into your body, into your skin. We don't exactly know what that is yet, but we do know it's spiritual and it's also physical. There's two parts to the mark. A lot of people don't get that. A lot of people don't understand that. They're, they're, they think it's Sunday worship or they, they think it's uh, money in your hand or, or, or they just think it's something spiritual and invisible. And it is invisible and spiritual on one hand, but it's also something physical. Okay. 